All right, we have some uh, higher resolution photos of the uh, the new holes that are coming up. These are the dreaded dune holes. This is put up by Golf Clash Chin. So this looks like it's going to be a par four. And you got the cup up here. It looks like from the way the topography is, this has got to be maybe a hill. Maybe a hill, maybe a, a dip. Hard to tell whether this is elevated or not. It looks like it might be over here with these little with this movement. Like it comes up to a peak and then there's a flat point with all this stuff on it. Or whether it's down in the bottom of a bowl. <clears throat> draw a line. Let's draw some lines here. Draw a line from the T box to the pin. Pin to the T box. Now that side definitely looks like the side. Unless there's some way to bounce over if it was, I don't know. But this definitely looks like the shorter, the shortest line. So you've got a maneuver, you've got a sand trap. I'm not sure where our red lines will be. Like what we can get, like whether we can just achieve getting up in front and we have to take that chip on or if there's a way to get on in one. You never know on these par fours. All depends on where your red lines are at. So if you could, you know doesn't look like one of those holes. Well, maybe you could get over to the other side. You could try a max over power hook. We'll have to see on that one. <clears throat> hey, is this the next hole? This is the next hole. Par three here, for sure. This looks like a long, it looks like a short par three. from the tee box coming through I don't I don't like this bounce over stuff especially way back and having to feed it up you might have to do that one on one depending on what tour you got this in this one here is presenting you got lots of sand in front of you this is definitely one of those greens where my first option is always going to be to figure out where my red line is up here so that I can come at it with a guardian or I can come out with a Saturn. But my first and my first thought process on any of these par threes is to be inside of this area right here. That's my first thought. And then go from there, depending on the clubs that you have. But I'm sure that you could bring it up from down here and do the same kind of running it up thing that you could do from over on these islands. But you may have to use those islands from from a farther back tee. And I'm definitely gonna try and get as close as I can and go straight out of it. For sure. I have to force a lot of shootout. So when you're playing these holes, if you get up on somebody, unless you sink the hole, you got to, uh, hey. Now this is supposed to be, this must be the par five. This is hole number three. And there's a tee box. I mean, you might be able to get down into here. You draw that line now this is the shortest distance so staying down in the bottom part if you get up here in this very top part you might be able to run it down and run down it looks like it's going downhill it might be able to run that down to get it somewhere out here in front but you'd have to get way up there you draw the arc out here if we say the sand somewhere in this neighborhood on our arc shot from over here coming in no matter what than we are from over here definitely want to explore the lower part of this and if you get in trouble down here especially if you get in trouble on the bottom side you might be able to recover maybe I definitely want to explore the bottom part of this part five the right hand side Let's see our next hole this looks like another part three Definitely another one of those holes where if we're hitting from the front tee. And from the front tee coming up, straight line. Everything on this side of the line, you took this sand out. So the farther back you are, the more you're going to have to, you know, the more you'll probably, because you're cutting the angle, you're coming back here farther back. You may have to bring it around a little bit more. This will scoot you away from the sand a little bit. So you get a little bit of breathing room if you came in this way, if you wanted to bounce over. But if you're going to bounce over, you'll probably end up being over in this corner. 
more often than not. But this is definitely another hole that I'm going to try and get as close as I can. I want to start off over here on this side and I want to be like with the sand and there are lines like this. Or I want to try and find something that kind of takes this front corner out. So it could be down here coming up or it could be over here. More than likely I would want to take this whole thing out and I want to come at it from, you know, as close as I could get and probably up here towards the top and then work my way back. That way, if you hit it great to the left or the right, it wouldn't matter. You're, you're out of the sand. You're not going to get in it. And you could probably take out the sand back here in the back. There's probably a spot out there that it doesn't matter whether you hit it great or the left or the right. It still ends up perfect up here by the hole. But I'm going to start as close to the hole as possible. I definitely don't want to do this long bounce. So if you're using the island, you're going to use this corner more than likely. Right there. To try and get that. You're trying to come from the tee box this way and bring it over give yourself a little bit of room on that sand <clears throat> it'll get you to the same spot you'll have to use a little bit of side spin but <clears throat> side spin will make the make it give you a bow as opposed to being a straight line so the straight line up here if you're off you're off and, and you're putting the sand really into play but if you do the curve you're coming in at it like this and so the sand is farther out of play so if you would like the shot that's straighter in and you want to use that side spin, you can. There'd be room, but I would I'm gonna try and start off somewhere somewhere in this quadrant over here, somewhere on this side over here, and bring the ball up to the hole. Probably need it if you did that shot, you probably want a ball with side spin. So if you're using the nav, you might want to use a, a quasar might work better. See if we can get to the next one. He wants to stick around with me. Okay, he's sticking around with me. Let me look at that one. I think this is part. This is hole four. It's supposed to be a long hole. This is a par four. And I'm not sure about that. Look at that. With the tee box on this one, I this I think this is a par four. You know, I mean everything screams to go straight up, but look how narrow it is up here at the top. And the way the red line stuff's working, that's probably gonna be if you use an extra mile, that's probably gonna be at a very critical spot. Once you get once you really get kind of past that second bounce. You have no, I mean, that trajectory was dictated way back here when you hit the shot. You'll usually make, you, can, you have a pretty decent shot of making the first shot. And the second bounce, you're good. But when it hits that third time, your trajectory at, that, at this point, you're, you have no, no control over that. Your control ended when you released. And so having to come up through a, a long gap like this through that narrow of an area is, is a tricky tricky deal but i think like trying to get on in one that's that's gonna you know like if that was the shot that you had on here it depends on where your red lines are at because if you think about it, if you wanted to drive up here you can't make this curve until right here where it intersects to make this curve and that's a lot you know, if you think about curl, you're putting it on here, trying to get, trying to achieve this, this shot. It'll depend on where our red lines are at and what ball we have to bring out. But hopefully there's another shot other than this one. I mean, this looks like the obvious shot because it's the short, shortest distance to the hole. But man that little channel that you have to run up in right there at the end that is a scary little that's a scary little deal if you can try and stay out in the clear and maybe dribble down here so that you have a short pitch that might be a higher percentage shot even though you can't get on <clears throat> this will definitely be a hole we'll have to uh, see how it goes Pretty sure we're going to the next one though i think this is hole six and it's a par five i said one of the holes was like 600 and some odd yards if that's the case, I don't know. I don't know about getting 
you know, I don't know about getting over to this fairway over here. I don't think you could do it in one. You'd probably be somewhere around here trying to bleed out. There's one of the holes that's, uh, I just played here not, not too long ago in a tournament that has a shot like this where there's some trees out here and you're hitting them. But you've got a fairway here on that hole that you can bounce over and try and get through the rough. There ain't, it doesn't look like there's anything out there. I mean, it, that just looks like sand. <laughs> So there's no, there's not going to be any trying to go this direction and trying to get onto this area because there ain't nothing to bounce off of out here unless they're giving you a, a chance to bounce off those ruins. So it looks like you're going to have to go forward. And if you go forward, obviously, obviously, if you can get down here, but look at the, look at the tee box. Let's look at our tee boxes here. Tee box, drawing a line forward through that through this fairway area you know you're off in here and you need to and you want to get out here to get your distance so you can't start making that curl in order to clear all of these traps right here you can't start making that curl until probably right about there so you've got to get that far in your ball flight before you have to make the curve so this needs to be right where your first bounce is where you're starting to make that curve where it's really starting to show in your trajectory in order to get that done. And that's a pretty tall order. I don't think you can get out there. If this hole is really the 600 plus hole, I don't think you can get out there until the end of your run. <laughs> in that case, boy, that's rough. Rough. The deal would be is, is see this little bit of fairway right here? So, you know, if you if you could only get to this point right here and you draw a line this way and then you draw a line this way, this is a on your arc. You see this this part of your arc, it's going to be you're you're pretty close to the hole. You still got a lot of work to do here at that where that intersects. So, you know, it might be it might be worth exploring. A lot of people might just be going towards the bigger part of the fairway, but the distance here, you could get out to here. You had a big dog, you might be able to bounce right here. And then that bounce then takes you to your next bounce and you can bring it towards the hole and you could come at it this way. So, you know, you're not going to get, if you look at that angle, you're not going to be able to get back here and make that. You probably have to get somewhere up in, you know, like if you wanted to go this route, but this might be the route that we end up taking. And I'm not sure how far we can get down into this area as far as red line. I don't know if we can get down here, but if it's 600, if it's 600 yards, we ain't getting down there. We hit 460 yards, let's say, if though if it was downhill and we had the wind with us and everything, we brought a big, big ball and went, you know, 450, 460 yards. If it was 600, that only leaves 150. Now we're in wood range. So maybe that is the 460, but I think a mortal shot's probably going to end up putting you somewhere in this neighborhood. So instead of thinking like this, this might be the better route to go. And if you did the lower route, you would definitely want a club that had top spin. So that takes Guardian out of the picture. You definitely want to have a big dog. When you first start playing these holes and you go out there, um, you know, rotate your clubs around. Like take a big dog, make sure you have one, one bag with a big dog and make sure you have a bag with a sniper and make sure you have a bag with a Guardian. So you can come at some of these holes and like, You'll get, you'll, you'll play this hole a few times. You go, okay, I ain't had a big dog on the second shot. And then the question is, is why do you need a big dog on the second shot? Do you need a big dog on the second shot? Cause you didn't bring enough stuff on the first shot to get the, get it done. Cause you brought lower level balls or is it that you need to bring a bigger ball out and then you can get in your sniper range or, you know, or as, Hey, it doesn't matter if you bring out a Titan or not, <laughs> you're going to need your big dog on the second shot. But I'm definitely going to want to explore, like if you get out into this area and you shoot, this is a shorter distance because instead of having to go up the scale and then try and bring it back down, you can go more towards the hole. All right. Let's go back. All right. Another par three. Once again, I'm always going to start on any par three. If I draw that line, I'm going to start... You know, like you've got a lot of fairway here you can come down into and you're coming from this angle and you're trying to bring it back around to the hole. 
So I don't see any reason why I would ever want to try and bounce off of another surface unless I was hitting from a farther back tee and couldn't get that shot. But I'm always going to want to start on the green side so that I can take all of these traps completely out of play. I'm definitely going to start on the green side. Definitely. Another big hole. And we're in those last, this must be seven. Now oh, this is eight. So this is probably, it's got to be a par four. Man, these are monster par fours. So once again, drawing the line from the tee box to the pin, or to the pin. You can see where it goes. It intersects with this fairway and it intersects with this side of this fairway. So the shortest distance is to go from here, somewhere in here, somewhere in here, and trying to run it up. Okay, color on the page. This, this, try and run it up. <clears throat> this does lend itself because it's got this pocket. It just depends on how far you can get it out here. You've got it. You must, you must be able to get it out here. Depending on the length of this hole, you must be able to get it out here far enough that you could get from the tee box somewhere out in here with your red line, so that you could bounce over. So it'll probably be a ball issue. So if if you can't get to your red line out here and you draw the arc, you know, you draw that arc across here, then that means you won't be able to get to your red line until this area if you went to the other side. So I guess the goal here would be to try and run it. Run it. Uh, I don't think you're going to be able to run all that stuff. I think we're going to be limited to, in tournament, like one shot, the shortest distance. I suppose you may be able to come over from, you could split that difference instead of trying to bring it all the way up. You could use this red line and try and bring it back around this way so that you got that feel to, to it. Maybe this side of the course lends itself more to it coming in from this direction. Every, if everything's leaning in that direction, it'll definitely be better to bring it in from this direction. If the majority of the stuff out here is leaning to the, to the right, it's better to come at it from the right going left so that it rolls down. It'll keep it on a straighter line. I'll we'll have to see which way this, which if this is a bowl, it looks like it's a bowl. Like everything funnels down to it. Like all of this stuff is funneling down to it. If that's the case, if we came in at it from this direction and everything's being funneled down, we're gonna end up going to the left a lot. Whereas if we came in it on, from this way, even though this spot's more dangerous, we come in this way, everything's feeding this way, and it's got a white, the mouth is wider for us to be able to slip out. Maybe. Maybe. We'll have to see on this hole. Curious to see how these holes play. But the main thing is, is that when you start playing a new hole like this, the first time you play it, don't be afraid to just go out there and go crazy and try some shot. You like you look at it in real life and you go, wow, man, we could I could fit my ball over here on a max overpower and I could try and do a max overpower hook shot and come over to this spot and run it up the thing and see what it looks like. Don't be afraid to do that. Hole number nine. This is a big par five. There's the tee boxes. So the tee box is right here. And here's the pin. So we have this line. This is our line to get there. So on a shot like this, what my hope is is that the red line somewhere up in this neighborhood so that I can come at it like this. If, if you're using an extra mile and the red line's up in this neighborhood, then this is a great hole for an apocalypse because the apocalypse will get you more curl so that you can get more on this line. Now let's see what the green looks like. The green might be one of those ones where everything's sloping down like this and kind of funneling down. And if that's the case, being low, coming straight at it is usually a better shot because you don't have to put as much movement on the ball. Whereas if you're over here at an angle and you're coming at it, you're involving the slope for the entire portion of your shot. Sometimes it's the other way where like this side's falling down. And if you can get further out here, you can engage it on the flat at the bottom. So it just depends on the way that the holes are trained, like where the perfect spot is to be. But we'll have to see what 
I mean, obviously this hole feeds itself to one of those. This is there's a lot of holes in the game that look just like this that feed themselves to the right. And right at that critical moment, you're engaging the skinniest part of the fairway. So your ball trajectory up here is critical. Making sure that you gave yourself enough room so that it doesn't really matter whether you hit it great or left or the right. They may make this as where this is has to be done with like an extra mile or apocalypse. That's it. Upper level Thor's hammer. They may make it so that it's that it has to be the biggest club in your back. I can't see you being able to get over here, but I don't know. I don't know what the distances look like. If the red line, so that we could, so this part gets engaged. In order for that to happen, is we've got to be somewhere in here with our normal red line. And so I don't see any way, you know, just looking at it on the map that we're going to end up in this fairway. Somebody may go up here and try and trickle up, and then they're trying to bring it into the hole that way. Because I don't know how steep this is. All right, that was just a little bit better look at the hole so that we can at least see the deal. So they start up tomorrow. So hopefully everybody will have a lot of good practice. And I'll we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.